and I'm starting the recording and I'm going live. Okay. okay. Um, welcome everybody to the uh, what uh, today is the uh, seventh day of this webinar series of the Get Well with Homeopathy group, uh, which is an initiative thought about by uh, by Genoveva and Uta. And uh, I'm so happy to be helping them uh, with this. Uh, and I've met some in, uh, some amazing doctors, uh, heard their speeches, their, their webinars and their ideas on and what makes homeopathy very special to them. Today we have with us a doctor who has gone all around the globe uh, because her husband works for the IT industry. So she's lived in most of uh, most countries of the world and wherever she goes, she's taken homeopathy with her. And uh, she's found solace in homeopathy. Wherever she goes, she helps people there in each country. So now she's in Dublin. She lives in Dublin now and she's looking forward to taking active part in the Irish uh, homeopathic scene as it is. Uh, but she has two kids, so she's got her hands full. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Dr. Shruti Singhal and uh, she's going to be sharing with us uh, her experiences on what made homeopathy special. Dr. Shruti, it's over Hi. to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Karthik, um, for this introduction and uh, uh, very good afternoon and good evening to all of you who are here today in this webinar that uh, what makes homeopathy so special and uh, uh, my name is dr shruti uh, currently i am in dublin ireland and uh, as doc as Kartik told that i have been in many countries and continents because of uh, my husband and uh, but i never uh, left homeopathy i am continuously practicing and i am continuously in touch with homeopathy because uh, the same thing i was telling to kartik also once you realize what homeopathy is you you can't uh, get away you are so amazed by every single result of homeopathy that you want to go deep and deep in it so um let's go what homeopathy is and i have here many friends and some patients and they all want to know what homeopathy is uh, and how does it work and how what is it uh, uh, effectiveness how it works how long it take and there are many myths also that it takes very long or we will get some other disease uh, after taking the homeopathy treatment people are little scared also so homeopathy is very special i would say in every aspect in everything be it case taking when you take a case you make friends with every patient you know so deep about them uh, that sometimes you are the only one with whom patient shares all the things and then uh, it is so safe. Uh, did you hear any other pathy in which you can give uh, it to a pregnant woman also without any harmful effects or a newborn uh, just who is uh, one week or one day old or uh, without any side effects? Kids always love homeopathy pills. And uh, all uh, your all symptoms are uh, just vanished with the uh, correct uh, medicine and correct treatment so homeopathy is special for me in every way in every way homeopathy is special um, today what we will cover so uh, because uh, as some friends of mine they came to know that uh, i am going live so they said no we want to know a uh, little bit about homeopathy so i will uh, talk uh, some fundamental laws on which homeopathy works and then the topic case taking how case taking is different and special in homeopathy uh, then in chronic diseases and in acute diseases and then i will present two cases of mine which are very interesting and i will tell you why they are interesting so uh, i will start with fundamental laws of homeopathy so there are uh, four laws on which homeopathy works. So first law is law of similar. Law of similar is, uh, this law says, what symptoms a substance can produce in a healthy body. That means if you take 
some substance when you are healthy when you don't have any disease so it can produce some symptoms and it has the ability that substance has the ability to cure similar symptoms if you are in diseased condition so the well known example is taking cinchona bark by dr samuel hanneman who is father of homeopathy so what he did he uh, took uh, cinchona bark in crude form and he developed um, uh, malaria like symptoms rigor shivers fever and then he realized that if uh, that cinchona in potentized form which we um, uh, which we have in homeopathy the potentized uh, substance if that potentized form uh, is given to some malaria patient who has malaria then uh, it has the ability to cure those symptoms so this law is the same and on this law only uh, homeopathy works so when some patient comes to you and he or she tells you about your about their problem so we have to select that substance that remedy which has the similar symptoms and uh, it can uh, cure the patient so this is the law of similar so uh, second law is law of single dose so what uh, it is uh, it is said that we have that vital force in our body there is a force which keeps us healthy and we call it vital force so when it is in balanced state when it is uh, in balanced state we are healthy we healthy means just not that we don't have any symptoms that we don't have diarrhea or fever or um the big problems like asthma or anything healthy is when you are physically mentally and emotionally well so now today also you all must have heard about the suicide of that famous actor so it's not like that what other people are saying oh you are healthy means you don't have any problem you don't have fever you don't have this that is not healthy healthy is when you are physically mentally mental uh, balance is nowadays i think it is more important than being physically healthy and after this covid and all when we are staying home for so long period i am seeing that a lot of patients a lot of persons are developing anxiety and they are not ready to um, to uh, actually uh, feel it they will say no no we are fine we are happy at our home but somewhere deep this situation is uh, affecting them and they are so anxious and they are developing symptoms they are psych there are psychosomatic symptoms we don't realize we say no nothing is happening and then so many mental emotions are going on anxiety fear i there are so many so healthy is not only uh, physically healthy but also mentally and emotionally being healthy so if your vital force is in balance so you are all physically mentally and emotionally healthy so what happens if there is any other force external force or external stimulus which cause deviation of this vital force so we come into this disease condition so homeopathy medicines what they do they act as a catalyst they just trigger that uh, thing which keep your vital force in balance so homeopathy medicines are those little substances which keep you again in healthy condition and we homeopath who whoever is practicing we have to find that one remedy which ag can again uplift your vital force so i will discuss how we find that i will discuss it in case taking and why it is important which is the topic here uh so uh, this is all about second law law of single dose the one medicine which we have to find the constitutional remedy uh, remedy or the individualistic remedy of you of the one person of every person which we have to find third law is law of minimum dose that we need only the little trigger we don't need uh, it can be of we have uh, potencies like homeopathy medicines are in potencies like 30 200 1m cm and we have to find that minimum dose which is required for that 
particular person and we do not need to give uh, so much uh, doses to a patient to get cure and that cure should be rapid gentle and permanent and this is very important rapid means uh, th this is a big myth in homeopathy that homeopathy everyone most of the persons will say that uh, homeopathy takes very long uh, in the treatment no so th there is a funny instance most of the time it happens i will like to share it that uh, a, a friend of mine she came and she said i am having this problem since five years and uh, i am taking uh, the allopathy medicines for three years for this and uh, i am not having any um, positive effects and i'm tired of taking this thing now so I want to start homeopathy treatment. So I said, okay, and we took her history and we discussed and then the question was, and how long it will take? So I said, uh, let's see how your body reacts, maybe three months, or three months, so much. So I, I told her that you should understand that the disease is so long so chronic and you are taking treatment for three years then with homeopathy at least you can wait for three months three months is not a long period and in acute diseases the uh, the effect is like within minutes within seconds you can see the effect so both homeopath and the patient should be patient uh, the cure is always rapid there but rapid doesn't have any definition it can be uh, within minutes within months or within years if you are having like 10 years of migraine so rapid is one year is also rapid so the cure should be rapid gentle means without any discomfort whenever you start taking medicine you feel happy you feel better in any form and permanent permanent is also very important it it should not be like this that and cure doesn't uh, cure is not like this that when you will stop the medicine and it will reoccur which generally happens you are not dependent on the doses for all your life if the medicine is correct the cure will be rapid gentle and permanent so this is the third law and the fourth law is it is very interesting direction of cure uh, so first i will read this and then i will uh, explain it a little bit so according to homeopathy the cure should be from more important organ to less important organ i know every organ is important i will i will discuss this from an upward direction to a downward direction from inside to outside or in the reversal of symptoms as they appeared to a patient so uh, what is this and uh, how it works so uh, it is from the cure should be from more important organ to less important organ so it means that if you are having a problem in some of your vital organ like in lungs or kidney or some important organ uh, and you start you have you may have chronic bronchitis or asthma or emphysema so when you start treatment and you start getting better so sometime it happens that the this lung problem is getting better and you are getting um, skin symptoms so we should not be worried it means that cure is taking place and i will present a case on the similar uh, theme what happened when one patient came to me so it is uh, so i think you sh you understand now it is from more important organ to less important organ and then finally it, it is not like that that on the skin it will remain it will also go but uh, it shows that cure is taking place your medicine is right you are getting better and you will be fine uh, same from upward direction to downward direction from inside to outside same uh, i gave example for asthma and skin symptoms and or in the reversal of symptoms like 10 years ago or 15 years ago you developed uh, skin rash or something and it is cured or psoriasis or something and it is uh, for you it is cured by putting some ointment or something and then after some time you develop some other problem like kidney problem or something and when you start treatment so it happens 
that your kidney thing is getting better and you are having that uh, uh, skin problem again so it doesn't mean that homeopathy is uh, uh, starting to uh, starting me to get new symptoms no it is your cure all the things are getting away you are getting perfectly fine so these are four laws on which homeopathy works and this this is very interesting when you read these type of things in book you don't believe most of the things you don't believe that more important organ to less important organ how will it take place but when you see and when you treat patient and it happens then every time you feel like it is a magic it is a miracle homeopathy is really a miracle and it happens it's true it it is true i will show it to you in my case so these are the laws of um, homeopathy and now case taking so case taking uh, in homeopathy is very special because uh, if you have taken a good case it is said that a good case taken is half job done so if you have taken because all our treatment is based on symptoms and not only the common symptoms common symptoms are can anybody can have but we have to find out those uncommon unusual special symptoms and then we have to make a picture of the patient uh, how he behaves how he talks how he sits so as soon as a person enters or talks to you or calls you how he is talking how he is sitting how he is what he is wearing uh, colored clothes or uh, ardi clothes uh, his reaction his face so on every minute thing the medicine changes so in homeopathy the if you and me both are having the same problem say asthma uh, our medicine will be different because uh, i i feel some in it in some other way you feel it in some other way uh, i am relieved by some other method you are relieved by i am relieved by lying down you are relieved by stooping ahead so every little symptom is different so physicians observation is very important and in our book repertory which is a type of dictionary for homeopaths uh, there are a lot of symptoms i have mentioned here uh, some like face blotted which you can just observe uh, on face there is a full chapter of in every little detail expression anxious or childish or confused when you start talking so in mind you can um, see talk taciturn uh, they don't want to talk or loquacious like if they start they will not stop uh, especially in kids it is very important Uh, in children cases you th the observation is very important because you don't get many symptoms from children but uh, your observation matters a lot and uh, if you ask a question then how the patient is answering answers short in the mind you can find answers short abruptly how he sits yeah literally patient come and sit like this with head in hands and elbows on knees like this every little minute details are there on and every little minute details the medicine changes so first is physician's observation these from where we get our case then by patient who talks who tells and we have to be like it is it is an art to take a case because uh, nobody is like that that they will come to a doctor and they will start telling their story so it is your art how you take out the minute details from their within and how you select the medicine and sometimes the person doesn't realize that how he is behaving so a family members or who is whoever is accompanying him it is very important to take uh, details from them also uh, because most of the time person says that uh, no i am not angry at all i never get angry but the family member will tell that uh, anger is <laughs> very common in this person like this and why do we take case uh we take case to know the disease uh, what type of problem he has 
and uh, to know the person and to find out the totality of symptom on which we decide the medicine so case taking is uh, a good art and it is different in chronic diseases chronic diseases means diseases which you have for a long time so uh, name age after these present complaints what complaints and then history of present complaints this is very important history of present complaint means how did it start so there can be some mental reason some shock like yesterday one of my fellow doctor was saying that uh, he he was uh, if you have heard that he was uh, representing the case of bed wetting in one case the person was scared the the ch child was scared uh, because of the scolding and in second case uh, he uh, was very dull or something happened some time back that's why he was they both were doing bad wetting so history is very important how your present complaint started then past complaint uh, what were the past history family history is very important diabetes thyroid cancer history from that we can know miasms then physical physical generals appetite thirst these this is the answer for those patient who say that why are you asking so many questions what that does that mean with my problem so physical generals are important hot or chilly sleep how is sleep perspiration like i said on every little detail it is important uh, our medicines changes and then mental general how is mentally how is he how is his behavior how he thinks uh, if they are sad or angry they, do they want consolation or they just want to be alone do they need friends or do they want to party or whatever how is their mental state it is very important to know the person then modalities where the problem is aggravating where the problem is getting better and concomitants so what are the accompanying symptoms with the main symptoms so these are some basic points the, the case taking differs a lot like in ladies there is all menstrual history and uh, gynec history is important in children some other points are there i am just giving the basic idea um, because of uh, on which we can prescribe the medicine then in acute diseases acute diseases means sudden diseases like you are having diarrhea you are having uh, stomach ache or you are having fever so on that observation like in fever how patient is feeling how is he behaving and then location sensation modality and concomitant so same location how he is feeling sensation modalities where, when it is increasing when it is decreasing and accompanying symptoms so these are the points of case taking acute diseases so case taking is uh, a very important part in homeopathy then therapeutic importance i will go on this uh, after presenting my case so i am presenting here first case of mine it is a case of allergic rhinitis and laryngitis so what happened a 40 year old male so it it is very interesting see what how a patient uh, how we find symptoms and how patient tells uh, his problem and symptoms so this 40 year old male came uh, to me with this left side swelling this big lump in his throat and pain Uh, in throat and uh, while sneezing his pain was going to left ear and he was not able to swallow there was so much pain in the throat and they were more worried with this lump and he was not able his voice was completely gone so they were taking he, the, the the person was taking painkillers and anti inflammatory for about 10 or 15 days and uh, doctor diagnosed it as a laryngitis i have written it in next slide i think he went to an allopath and was on painkiller and anti inflammatory medicine for 10 12 days and it they had no relief the person was suffering he was not able to talk his voice was, uh, like this he was i had to sit near to him to listen what he was saying and there was swelling in vocal cords the uh, laryngitis it was a case of laryngitis and uh, he was having uh, this allergy problem 
uh, before coming here he was here in dublin for 5 years and before that also they were in i think manila or somewhere in philippines and he was having this uh, rubbing of eyes uh, nose itching throat typical allergic symptoms which are aggravated in morning and uh, if the the one interesting symptom was if his sleep is disturbed by any reason he was having two girls and uh, whenever his um, little younger daughter if she made her wake him wake up from sleep the continuous sneezing start all other physical general was uh, normal thirst was less stool was normal perspiration was normal sleep if undisturbed it was fine there was fear of lizards and cockroach and he was anxious about health and future so when uh, what happened when i went to him and told him uh, it feel i don't like this i uh, and he, in he came in uh, winters and he was wearing a shirt with open buttons so no nothing he wanted nothing here and then he was having so much pain and swelling and everything but he was continuously speaking he was his wife was accompanying him but he was not letting her speak on behalf of him he was telling his symptoms i have i have this i i am having this trouble he was despite of pain he was continuously talking and this is very striking symptom this was the very striking symptom for me because generally when we are in pain we tend to keep quiet uh, if we are having pain but uh, and then he was empty swallowing was there pain in empty swallowing was there he was not uh, letting me touch and then he was continuously sleeping and on other symptoms also i i have not written all the full case here so first prescription was like is 200 one dose in the cell for 7 days and uh, when he came he came i think on 6th day and his swelling was gone completely and he was not taking since the time he started my medication he was not taking any conventional medicines so his swelling was gone his voice was very better and uh, uh, he 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 was very happy that his uh, swelling is gone and he he was feeling that the inflammation is also reduced but all other uh, allergy symptoms were there so rhinitis symptoms were there watery nose itchy throat anxiety restlessness and on basis of these and all other physical generals arsenic 30 was given for 7 days and all symptoms were better except that if my daughter wakes me up in night then i sneeze a lot and nose block and arsenic was continued constitutionally in between like as 200 was given and he was all fine his complaint of this allergy allergic rhinitis voice problem and he was having again and again he was having some attacks of these problems they were all gone and uh, since i think after 2019 i think in 2020 he is perfectly fine and you make so many friends in homeopathy when they tell uh, each and every detail of theirs to you so second case is on the direction of cure this is the case it is a case of asthma and dermatitis i was in hong kong during during that time so this uh, is a case of 12 year old girl and when she came to me she was in very bad condition she was <sighs> <sighs> she was like this she was taking breathing so difficulty a case of asthma was this and she was not able to breathe properly she was uh, with her mama and cough running nose sneezing and main problem was breathing she was not able to breathe at all and uh, his mother said that she is an asthmatic patient for since 2 year she was having this respiratory problem uh, initially she was on steroids and doctor say to continue it but the mother doesn't want uh, to continue but uh, she was not taking any medicine orally but inhaler she was using inhaler like many times in a day then i took the whole case physical general our uh, thirst was there Uh, little for little water she was uh, she was just i i don't think i will get better why is this happening with me i when will it be cured i don't think i will be cured at all it is like for many days many years she was just 12 year old and she was telling like this and uh, 
on auscultation i find that i found that there was wheezing and bronchial tubes seems contracted then after totality of symptom on all the symptoms arsenic 200 was given one dose and uh, otherwise saclac is given every week one dose was given so she responded well all symptoms started getting better and she reduced a uh, little bit of like six from six times she started five times she di- didn't find the need for inhaler but there was anxiety restlessness fear of like i will never get better these things were there so asnik was responding very well asnik was given in the same way and she started getting better then what happened she started to sleep nicely and she also reduced the dose of inhaler but what happened suddenly on all the joints these uh, on the elbow on bands of elbow skin rashes appeared and very bad all red scratchy and when she came to me after one week it was like bleeding uh, there was bleeding and very bad uh, condition on all the joints on all the bands of the joints knees behind the knees on the elbows and uh, then i asked why it happened what happened did you uh, what suddenly what happened then her mom remembered yeah then when the girl was born and when she was one year old she had similar rashes and i almost forgot about this and then some cream was given by the doctor which we applied and they were fine since then it never happened and now they are there and now i remember i recollect that yes when she was one year old it happened and all the joints same rashes were there so this is the direction of cure which i, I was saying when you see these things happen in your practice then you believe so much in homeopathy that it is like really it happens that your um, lungs are getting better and disease the cure is getting take place from inside to outside and uh, Uh, so it was the case of definitely the cure was from more important organ to less important organ or you can say reversal of symptoms and arsenic was continued and she was perfectly fine after i think 8 months or 10 months she continued treatment she was very patient the girl was very patient and when she started getting better she was very happy the only arsenic continued and rashes were also disappeared and everything was disappeared so these were two cases of mine so therapeutic importance which i left so in homeopathy we do not treat the disease we treat the person as a whole and we have to find a medicine according to the person because every person reacts differently to same stimulus like nowadays also you can see in corona virus uh, no two persons are having same symptoms some are having headache some are having fever some are having fever not at all only sore throat some are having loss of taste so every patient is different every medicine is different the nature of vital force depends on person's habit traits and temperament which may seem insignificant to the disease but they are not and once the nature of vital force is perceived a similar remedy will be given not only all symptoms start getting better but person feels healthier and more energetic so this is homeopathy and uh, these are the things which i wanted to say i think uh, some other doctor is also waiting so thank you all for listening and uh, dr shruti you can uh, take some more time i think we're just waiting for dr sunita to come sujata okay. yeah. yeah you can go ahead take some more time we're enjoying your uh, webinar <laughs> <laughs> thank you so Maybe much you can share another case uh, if you uh, have to. okay so case uh, i have not written it here but uh, um nowadays i am having a case i will just uh, talk uh, about it a bit so this okay. uh, is about um, uh, a small child uh, as i said that in corona virus you don't feel you don't uh, you don't accept that uh, we are uh, having some problem but i think most of the patient and new in news also you get to read every now and then that how it is affecting us corona virus everybody some some people they accept that okay we don't like to stay at home our life is like 
stopped we want to go out and we we are saying this we don't feel like do, you know, staying at home we don't feel like working at home but some people who who don't say that and they are developing symptoms and after going to doctor they are doing all the reports and all the blood test and everything is coming fine mentally you are not sound and the i think in coming era or coming years we have to focus on mental diseases as well because it is very important it's you are not diseased or you are not at problem if you develop any symptom if you are having fever if you are having uh, lung problem or kidney problem or gastritis problem gastric problem anything that doesn't mean i may feel that oh you are looking very perfect but inside what you are thinking it is very important nowadays Uh, we have to be calm we have to be patient and we should believe and we should be hopeful that whatever is going if if that is good it is good for you and if it, if that is not good the good better will come this phase this phase will go and new phase will come so it is very important nowadays um that's all i want to yeah Dr. Shruti, tell us something about how you got into homeopathy. So actually, when it it is like when I was very small, I think eight years or ten years, I wanted to be a doctor. That was for sure, because that time my mom uh, is the youngest sister of all, and all my cousins were either doctor or engineer. They were two options, and I never liked to sit on laptop and do work. all the office work all the time so i always wanted to be a doctor and because my grandfather uh, was a naturopath he is no more now but uh, there is a small town in up and uh, we have a naturopathy hospital so my mom was brought up by naturopathy treatment and she was a firm believer of homeopathy so f- when we were very small we used to go to homeopathy clinic and used to bring medicine for my mama or uh, for us so i i always felt like these sweet pills uh, what is this and how they work so i always want to be a homeopath uh, after i first i want to i wanted to be a doctor and then i wanted to be a homeopath i never wanted deep in my heart i never wanted to be a gynecologist my father wanted me to be a gynecologist actually but we fought one day my father and me and i told him no i wanted to be a homeopath only so he supported is he happy now is he happy now that you won <laughs> the argument yeah yeah he is very happy he is uh, he uh, maybe uh, when uh, today maybe he was seeing me on live on this facebook he must be very yeah. happy yeah he must be proud you know you uh, yeah. achieved so much so but, so, but i am happy that whatever i thought when i was a child it happened and i managed to be a homeopath <laughs> that that's very good i think your perseverance led you there yeah. what was your hardest case what was the case that really challenged you and uh, uh so here in dublin i don't know in dublin i am seeing many skin cases i never saw so many skin cases i don't know because of weather or it is an island um because of ocean all the time atlantic ocean and ocean is also heavy. i am seeing so many uh, skin cases here before here i was more into respiratory problems i have treated many piles case as well piles case because tonsillitis is uh, very important because they these are some a- areas tonsils and piles where uh, patient comes to you when the doctor said that okay now operation is the only uh, only uh, way so tonsillitis also now you do n- nothing can be done and then only operation can save you same as piles i have here one patient um, who was having pile and uh, she was told to um, uh, go and operate it but she is fine now so specific symptoms are there in homeopathy so if needle like pain she told me uh, i feel like some needles are going inside uh, it it feels like this so 
it it always amazes me because you when you read in your third year or fourth year when you read materia medica i was i don't know about others but i used to think how is it possible how it, there is one symptom i remember in lac caninum uh, medicine that a uh, person feels like he is floating in the air so i know i remember that when i read this i read this this symptom i laughed so much who will come and tell that i am floating in air uh, it it is not possible but one when i was uh, in internship that time one patient from a village we were in lucknow i did my uh, homeopathy from nhmc uh, lucknow college so that villager came and he said to me i was taking his case and i don't remember what the case was maybe some i think he was smoke he used to smoke a lot and he was having some lung problem but again and again he was telling me that i feel that there is this big cotton pile under my feet whenever i walk i feel there is this cotton bundle i am not walking on the floor and i am walking on that cotton bundle after again when i was taking the case i was asking him what is your problem what do you do again he was coming back to this again and again no i feel that i am walking on cotton bundle so Uh, i went to my doctor under whom we are taking the case and uh, he told me did you read lacanainum floating in the air then i remembered oh my god uh, <laughs> such a specific symptoms can be there you don't uh, if uh, one of the doctor i think dr shelly sharma uh, his her presentation was that she was the one who was saying that only two people believe in homeopathy one who is practicing and seeing and other person who is like uh, he is just about to die or something and he was saved <laughs> like many doc- many patient who were my, my finger was about to go and we had a major accident with and homeopathy saved us so those two people believe in homeopathy so it is yeah. amazing it's amazing the seriously I, every case is amazing for me and every case from every case i learn something definitely that's true that's true uh looks like uh, we are not able to get dr sunita in she probably has some other engagement and she's not able to make it today so i think we're going to wind up with this uh, talk and uh, we have for tomorrow at uh, 7:30 we have dr da- um, we have dr gaurang and dr kapi lemon so we we welcome you all for another talk tomorrow at 7:30 we look forward to seeing you here back here at the get well with homeopathy group and um, thank you dr shruti for sharing so thank much thank you so uh, much of, thank you uh, for your time and thanks one again uta janoveva and you kartik for arranging this this platform it is very special homeopathy is special definitely and i want everybody should know this later or sooner and uh, thank you so much thank you All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.